Quarters? Of course. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Thomas Elms. Uh, I play Hamish Duke in the order. Be doing once you wake up. Oh my god, straight out of the gate, huh? With the, the, the impossible questions. Um, I, was, I was sitting in the van on the way home from set, and they gave us these scripts for the last episode. And I just remember feeling so betrayed. It was almost like I was surprised by how emotionally invested I became in this character in this universe. And just when I'm reading these lines, I'm just going, no, no, no. And I got quite got quite distraught, a little bit angry. You know, and then and then all my you know all my wonderful, incredible uh, co-actors and scene partners go, hey Thomas, it's cool man. Like this this allowed this is such a great way to go into season two. You know, we have essentially a blank slate. There's so many different directions we can do we can go with the universe, with the characters because of this. And so I went, okay, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, but there is that just sense of just betrayal. Oh my god. And just to see them carting away all these artifacts, you know, that they've accumulated over the years of cracking skulls and, you know, disemboweling people for never paying for pizza or cheating on their tests or whatever it is that we, you know, these judge, jury, executioner things we get up to. Um, I, I would love us to just, like, get... I feel like we need to get those artifacts back. I mean, I miss the Eye of Apollo. It's, what's really cool about um, these sets that they built is just the incredible detail that they made in these universes. Um, a lot of the uh, sets we had were um, in a like in studio, so they were in house. So you basically step like into like a library or something, and it's this old library, and it almost like smells you know, like rotting, moldy books, and then you take two feet and you're in some swank penthouse apartment. And everywhere you look, there's these incredible little bits of detail that somebody's put there that may only ever get like a half a second of screen time when the camera pans over. But for you, or for myself, in there, in this world, it made it so easy to just like, it was like putting on a pair of shoes. Like we just, we spent, I mean, most of my time is spent in the werewolf mansion. Um, and I remember one, one afternoon I was Skyping with my coach and she goes, uh, well, have you found Hamish's favorite book yet? And I go, oh my God, that is so incredibly cool. I haven't. And what an interesting, like, like you're always looking, or I'm always looking for these little, it's like a little keyhole or something that lets you kind of peer into this. It's like you're looking for a way into this world or something to latch on to that's real and tangible. And to just go through all these old books or looking at his records and going, what's his favorite record? What's that record that he puts on when he's in that mood and he just wants to get taken away to some place, you know, that isn't quite filled with so much death and responsibility and... Um, it, it, it made it such a pleasure and it made it almost so easy to show up to work every day. It was incredible. Um, and such an almost thankless job. Um, you know, these people that build these incredibly detailed universes um, that we get to play in and we get to enjoy. And it's just amazing. Well, in that vein, because we know from the panel that um, the Order is trying to keep the nights apart, so we're yeah. going to actually see you experiencing life, university life, being out and about, listening to to music. I, hope you so. like, yeah. I hope so. Um, I know uh, in I think episode six or whatever he's seen Hamish is seen teaching class. Um, I think he's filling in for the the, the dead uh, fit, uh, uh, ethics professor. Um, I think that would be really cool. Um, I'm very curious to see where that goes in terms of the arc of the story. I mean, are we just going to be in handcuffs the whole time and sitting in some rotting in some order magical prison? Or are they going to, like, let us go about our business, but we're just kind of like zombies or something like that? Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, what is he teaching? Ethics? He's, a, he's, a, he's on his third bachelor degree. Um, because, <laughs> you know, being a nighttime vigilante, you kind of got to lie to your family. So he's been, he's been, I think he says he's been a knight for like eight years or something. Um, so, if, you know, if you're a guy and you've got some entrepreneurial father, big wig kind of guy, and you're stuck on your bachelor degree for the third time and you're taking philosophy, I can imagine things were maybe a little tense back at the homestead. <laughs> um, I would be very curious, uh, just in that vein, 
to for us to go a little deeper because we've established the world, we've established the universe, we know who these characters are. The Order and the Werewolves now seem a little bit more intertwined than at the beginning. Um, not sure if we're aware of each other per se, but uh, I think the potential for I'm curious about what's his what's his father like? What's the relationship like with his family? There's mention of a girlfriend, a girl named Cassie who's died, and there's obviously a tremendous amount of heartbreak there. There's a grief that he hasn't really reconciled in himself. And um, if there was any kind of chance at a reconciliation or some kind of reunion between those two lovers, even if it's just her going, listen buddy, you gotta let it go, okay? Like, it's been a while here, like, you gotta maybe stop drinking so much, you know? Um, I'm really excited for it. <laughs> Uh, probably what you would imagine when it comes to like an eight foot tall monster. Uh, <laughs> uh, you were on the panel. Uh, were, you were on the panel? Yeah, so you did. We saw that. Uh, there's that amazing scene uh, where they try to initiate the werewolves into the order and they do the whole, uh, you know, the coin trick. And he goes, oops, and suddenly he gets torn apart by these monsters. So, probably what you'd imagine. Um, but I think, to be honest, I think he's gonna. He's got a bit of a bone to pick. I think I was. I was angry myself. I remember sitting in the van on the way home, and they gave us the uh, scripts for the final episode. And I was actually surprised at how like outraged and distraught I was when I'm reading this. I'm going, no, no, no. Oh God, they took the eye of Apollo. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so. I'm very curious to see if we do get along, and because it's going to definitely take some uh, big, uh, some big, big olive branches, you know, if there's going to be any kind of truce after the way we left things off. Yeah.